Morning guys, Lenny Reed, Down My Diesel Products. As promised, we're staying on this old 12 valve project and trying to get it done. So it is Cyber Monday and we're here shooting a video. We should be at work doing stuff, but instead we're doing this stuff. <laughs> uh, Mitch, what have we done so far to this truck? So far, we've got stage ones in it now. Yep. We've advanced timing. Yep, and 17 degrees-ish right now. Yep, and we're back to stock fuel plate and AFC settings. And so, so far we've, we've checked fuel pressure, put a pressure limit valve in it. Um, I bought this truck from an estate and the lady didn't know a whole lot about it. Unfortunately, her husband passed away. So the truck, like all the paint on it, led us to believe that it was a virtually stock truck and it drove very stock. So it made, uh, what did it make as received? It came in at 100 and 171. 171. And then we pushed. Then we discovered that it wasn't so stock yeah. because the break off bolt, which also had been painted, mm -hmm. uh, gave us the, the uh, illusion yeah. that it was just a stock truck. And so we thought it's a 180 horse truck, stock governor. It's not going to be very fun. And it definitely wasn't. 171 <laughs> wasn't real fun. So we took the plate and which it had a TST 10 plate in it, shoved it all the way forward. We took the aneroid housing, shoved it all the way forward. Yep. And what did we make at that point? About a buck 85 yeah, or something? Yeah, 185. And that was also pulling all the preload off the AFC spring. So too. no spring pressure, yep. AFC all the way forward, yep. sp uh, plate all the way forward. So then with all of it given to it, 185 horsepower, still wasn't really where it needed to be. Um, at that point, did we time it then or did we time it after the next? We timed time? it when we put injectors in it. Okay, all right. So, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So, we were trying to do this basically like as guys would do it in the backyard type yes, of a deal. Exactly. So, yep. and we tell you that when you put a set of stage ones in, you should set timing like 17 degrees. So, we did that when we put the injectors in it. But before we even did that, we took the plate clean out of the truck and we mm -hmm. lost power. Yes. So, then we were down to what, buck 75? Yeah. 175 yeah. horsepower. Lost a and, significant amount of power. But, but it came in and the opacity was like, say, 70, I think, initially. 70, 77 on a pull. And then we got it up to like mid 90s. I want to say it was like a 94 yeah. with no plate, no Android. Yeah. It was smoky, didn't make any more power, made less right. power. Uh, so then I was like, look, let's just like do something that we know. So you grabbed a uh, stock fuel plate out of your toolbox. Yep. Put a stock fuel plate in it. We set the pump timing to 17 degrees. Yeah. We put a set of stage ones in it and we finally got it over 200 horsepower. It's 217 horsepower. Yeah. So during that, Mitch times using, uh, you do it like using the crankshaft. Yeah, he used a degree wheel on the crank. That's why I did it. And I time doing a dial indicator on the plunger in the injection pump finding yeah. number one at TDC. So he had to run, he's, he's buying his house and getting all set up here in Idaho. So he had to take off and I finished up pump timing. I set the pump timing to what should have been 17 degrees on a 180 pump and the truck didn't even start. So then I was like, damn it, somebody's already swapped the injection pump out on this truck. So then I timed it as it was a 160 pump and lo and behold, it starts up and runs perfectly fine. So surprise, surprise again. <laughs> Uh, the, the star lock in the timing plug in the uh, gear case housing was never removed. The pump has been, uh, swapped over to a 160 pump. Yeah. It had a TSD 10 plate in it and it's just, it's been nothing but surprises out of this truck so far, which this was going to be a how to like, uh, run dynamite diesel products and how <laughs> to learn how to do a little bit of hillbilly stuff, make a bunch of smoke. And it's been basically a bunch of troubleshooting with this pickup so far. So this morning we came into work and we're going to show you how to, again, not to do it. Um, the plungers and barrels on these injection pumps, when you put it in the test stand, you'll see injection lines that go up to a test nozzle. 
the test nozzle goes into a glass vial and it counts out how many cc's delivery you get out of that well we're going to be giving you those videos here within the next month um, pay attention stay tuned but since i don't have that on the truck right now and i want to continue on with this what i did is i advanced the plungers and barrels all the way over and this weekend i got to thinking about this truck um, I got to think of something white and painful that we're going to nickname this truck because so far we painted it white and yeah. it's painful. Right. So if you can think of a really cool name about something white and painful, then send it on to us. Um, and Michael Jackson's not going to work. So <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, so we're we're breaking the the carnal rule. You don't really want to do this because. If you can't balance all the plungers in the test stand and you just do what I'm doing on the dyno, you run the chance, strong chance of like melting a piston down because I might get one hole that contributes 20 or 30% more than the rest of them. But since this is just a dyno test and we're, since we're trying to keep the process moving along for you, we're just going to do it right now. But as soon as we're done with this, we're going to pull this pump off. We're going to throw one of our injection bumps on it and we're going to start advancing this up to like five, 600 horsepower anyways. So just for camera purposes, we're, we're cheating. Um, so I've knocked the plungers all the way over. Um, everybody should understand you shouldn't do that to your own street driven truck unless it's gonna go to the pump shop um, and have it benched. And when they bench it, basically they knock them all over and they bring them back down very subtly and softly to where they get the pump to deliver 100% of what they can. And then you can use your fuel plate to dictate how much fuel is coming into it after that. So a lot going on, but we're gonna give you some still shots right about now of what plunger the barrels look like in the, uh, like all the way retarded and then in the all the way advanced. So you'll see still shots of that right now. And like I say, please don't do that at home. Just have your guy at the pump shop do that. There's also some screws in the back of the injection pump for the angle and the advance of the rack travel. And those are something that's like a real bear to get at when it's in the truck. So we'll show you how to use that stuff in the future as well, but not here, it'll be on the test stand. Anyway, Mitch, what should we do? Let's cinch it all down and see what it does. I like it. I like it. So today we're going to dyno test some stage ones, which yes. with the plungers where they were, which was probably only like 10 to 20% advanced. Yeah. On they're, 60 pump. they're sucked way back. They were way back. Yeah. So we made 213. I'm going to guess that right now with a set of stage ones at 17 degrees, I'm guessing this thing knocks out 330, 340 horsepower just like this. That'd be nice. You, what's your guess? 275. 275. Yeah, I don't have a lot of faith in it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. It's been a little bit stubborn. All right, well, hey, guys, we'll break for right now, and we're going to uh, get this thing bolted down, get it uh, assembled, get it fired back up, and we'll should be another uh, dyno run in probably 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah. See ya.